Today I'm so excited because I will share with you what is Purim for us as Orthodox Sephardic Jews, how we celebrate it, what special food we eat on Purim, as well as the four main mitzvot or commandments we have to fulfill on that day. And I think the fourth one will surprise you. And if you're new here, hi, my name is Sarah Malka, and on my channel, I share all facets of my Orthodox Sephardic Jewish life as a full-time working mom with small kiddos. So please don't forget to leave this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Let me put on a pretty tickle, and let's jump into it. Purim is one of the minor holidays of the Jewish calendar. We call it minor holiday because on these days no restrictions are applied like on Shabbat or other major holidays like Passover. Which means that on the minor holidays we can drive the car, listen to music, do anything we do generally on a regular day. The jolly Jewish holiday of Purim is celebrated every year on the 14th of the Hebrew month of Adar. You can hear it being called Purim for us Sephardic Jews, Purim for our Ashkenazi brothers, or Pidim for our Hasidic brothers. However you hear it, it refers to the same holiday. Purim commemorates the divinely orchestrated salvation of the Jewish people in the ancient Persian Empire from Haman's plot to destroy all Jews, young and old, infants and women, in a single day. Purim literally means lots in ancient Persian. Purim was thus named after this word since Haman had thrown lots to determine when he would carry out his diabolical scheme, as recorded in the Megillah Esther or Book of Esther from the Torah. I will leave a link in the description box below to the full story of the Megillah Esther. Because in the Megillah Esther or Book of Esther, the name of God is not said nor written once and his identity is hidden, so we hide our identity with costumes. So throughout Purim, you will see from babies to adults dressed up to hide their identity. You will see different costumes from famous Torah heroes to dinosaurs and other creatures. Like with every Jewish holiday, some specific commandments are associated with Purim. Let's start with the first one. The reading of the Megillah or Book of Esther, which recounts the story of the Purim miracle. This is done once on the eve of Purim and then again on the following day. We have to listen to the Book of Esther read directly from a scroll and not a chumash, tanach, or Bible to be yotze or to fulfill this commandment. The Megillat Esther is read by the Balkore or a man specialized in reading the special parchment that has no vowels on it and that needs to be read following the same tamim or intonations as when a Torah scroll is read. The Megillat can be read at home or in synagogue as long as it is read from this special kosher scroll. Before the reading of the Megillah, the rabbi reminds us to stay completely quiet during the reading of the Book of Esther because even if we miss one word of the Megillah, it is considered as we have not fulfilled this mitzvah or commandment. The Balkore will do special blessings before the reading of the Megillah and only after reciting these blessings will he start the reading of the Megillah Tester. The only time you will hear noise during the reading of the Book of Esther is when we hear the name of the villain of this story, Haman. At this point, we tap our feet and some will have graggers or noisemakers to drown out the name of this villain. Every year, Jewish children will come home with a homemade version of their graggers to use during the reading of the Book of Esther. After the reading of the Megillah, the Baal Kore will do the final blessings. 
Now that we have accomplished the first mitzvah or commandment of Purim, we will wish each other Chag Purim Sameach, or some will say a Freilichen Purim. We go home and eat a lighter meal to break our fast since the day before Purim is a fast and it is called the Fast of Esther. For this meal, usually we will eat croissant, soup, and lovely desserts. The next morning, we go to the synagogue to pray and to listen to the Megillat again. On Purim, our day prayer and our Birkat Amazon, or blessing after eating bread, will include the brief Ve'alanissim section. This prayer describes the Purim story and thanks God for the miracles, redemptions, mighty deeds, saving acts, and wonders that he brought for our ancestors on this day many years ago. In the morning service, there is a special Torah reading as well. We're going to read Exodus 17, 8 to 16, describing the battle of Yehoshua or Joshua waged against Amalek, Haman's ancestral nation, almost 1,000 years before the Purim events unfolded. After our prayer and the second reading of the Megillah Tester, we will go home and eat a special breakfast filled with yumminess. Usually, as part of our breakfast, we will eat this special kind of bread with an egg in it. Yum. It is a typical <laughs> Sephardic tradition and we call this bread the Eye of Haman. And the children absolutely love them and they <laughs> love the egg as well found inside. During the daytime of Purim, we complete the second mitzvah or commandment, which is matanot laevionim, or to give to the needy. One of Purim's primary theme is the Jewish unity. Haman tried to exterminate us all. We were all in danger together, so we celebrate together too. Hence, on Purim day, we place special emphasis on caring for the less fortunate. We give money or food to at least two needy people during the daylight hours of Purim. In case we cannot find any needy people, the synagogue will likely be collecting money for this purpose. Usually, like here, there will be a special box in the synagogue to collect the money and the rabbi will distribute the money to people in need in an anonymous fashion to respect their dignity. On Purim, we give a donation to whoever asks. We don't verify his or her bank account, nor their intentions. As with the other mitzvot of Purim, even small children should fulfill this mitzvah. The third commandment we do during the day of Purim is sending gifts of two kinds of food to, to at least one person. On Purim, we emphasize the importance of friendship and community by sending gifts of food to friends. On Purim day, usually for us it will be after the breakfast, we will go and deliver our Mishloach Manot, which means sending of portions. Usually, we send a package containing at least two different ready-to-eat food items and or beverages. For example, pastry, fruit, beverage, to at least one Jewish acquaintance during the daylight hours of Purim. And every time we give a Mishloach Manot, we wish the other person Purim Sameach. Men give Mishloach Manot to men and women to women. Each year, I try to find new and creative ideas and themes for our Mishloach Manot. I always try to make the Mishloach Manot special for the person I give to, so they know how much I care about them. The children also do their own Mishloach Manot. They usually take their time to make their Mishloach Manot as beautiful as possible and then to make sure to put yummy treats in their baskets to tell their friends how special they are to them. And yes, usually it involves many, many sugary things. 
This year, I also added a little care package with every Michelois Manot. It is absolutely not at all necessary, but I know we will be cleaning soon for Passover or Pesach to remove all the chametz or leaven products. So I have added a cute sponge, which makes cleaning a bit funner, a hand mask to restore our hands after a long day of cleaning, some Tic Tac to add a bit of freshness, as well as the very needed chocolate to give us courage when we are ready to give up. What do you think? Do you think that the care package is a yay or a nay? Let me know in the comments below. Finally, the fourth mitzvah of Purim, or the fourth commandment on Purim, is to do a festive Purim feast. During the course of Purim Day, we gather our family and friends and often the whole community of a synagogue, like here, to a festive meal called Purim Seuda, or meal or feast of Purim. This meal is usually offered for free by a generous donator in the synagogue or in the community, giving the opportunity to everyone who wants to, to participate in this seuda. Traditionally, this meal begins before sundown and lasts well into the evening and sometime even the early morning. Often, the meal of Purim is held in a large banquet hall like this one. Men and women are separated by a meritza or separator. The tables are set perfectly for our Orthodox Sephardic Jewish community with two sets of knives and forks as we do not mix meat and fish together. There is often a DJ as well as a lot of space for dances. The meal is lavish, thank God. And of course, before eating the meal, we will take some bread, as according to the Torah and our tradition, a festive meal has to be accompanied by bread and meat. There are special basins to wash our hands ritualistically outside the hall, but sometimes they are inside the hall, like when we go to our favorite kosher hotel. Contrary to our morning routine, when we wash alternatively our hands three times, before we eat bread, we will wash our hands ritualistically with the Nutilatia Daim cup three times on each hand. Then we will recite the blessing or bracha. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kideshanu BeMitzvotav Etzvanu Al Nutilat Yadayim I will dry my hands thoroughly and then go back to the hall. We go back to our place and take some bread and we recite the blessing over the bread. Before eating it, we will dip it in the salt three times. The Purim Seuda usually starts with many salads and while we are enjoying the salads, usually the children will also enjoy their special children meal that they absolutely love. Next we have the fish which was absolutely delicious and of course we will not use the same utensils to eat the fish and meat as we cannot eat fish and meat together. While we are being served a lavish meat plate, the children are being served lovely burgers and fries. As you can see, the meal is catered to please everyone, to make everybody happy and for all present to have a great time. Between courses, there are dances and for some, a lot of drinking, as some communities, especially in the Hasidic communities, there is a tradition that the men should not be able to discern between Haman and Mordechai. As Orthodox Sephardic Jews, it is not our custom, but nonetheless, it is a very festive gathering. Usually, we dance together in a circle, holding hands to increase our sense of achdut or unity as together we stand as one people in front of adversity and in our successes. Of course, after our meal, we have a beautiful dessert, including these hamantashen or ears of haman, which is a traditional cookie you will find on Purim. 
The festivities continue until the early hours of the morning and everyone leaves with a tremendous sense of joy, belonging and unity, not only as a family, but as a community. I would love to know which one of the four mitzvot or commandments of Purim resonated the most with you? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for being here. It means the world to me. And know that your presence is like a miracle in my life. And I would not be here without you. If you are here until the end, please write in the comments. I love happiness. So I know I was not alone. Until next time, Chag Purim Samea, Happy Purim, stay safe, stay blessed. And don't forget to from it up. Find luck like a bet in Greek fountains Or lay lazy in bed with your head on my chest I hope you don't mind If I say that I love you